Hey, hi guys. Today is, uh, we're going to do something different. Instead of cameras, maybe we'll go over a little bit of camera, but right now what we want to discuss is light meters and the different uses of light meters and the different brands of light meters because each one is a little bit different. And I think there's a little mystery involved in light meters. People dependent are, are become dependent on light meters in the camera, but actually there are two different items and it's a integral tool for your studio use and for outdoor photography and such. So Mr. Wu is going to go over uh, the fundamentals of light meters and the different types of light meters available. Okay, so what do we got here, Mr. Wu? Okay. Okay, light meters, before the days of the electric light meter, they had this light meter we call an extinction meter. It is a device where you peep through and there's a gray scale and a reference card. So you aim it at the subject and you turn until the scale matches the tone of your subject. Then you read off the setting. It works. It doesn't need battery. The only drawback is that it depends on your eyesight and your age and the lighting. So sometimes you can be a little bit off. So after that, when they invented the electric light meter, the first version is what we call a selenium cell meter uh, it has a photo sensitive cell here that doesn't require battery when light falls on it it produces a current and then the needle will be deflect so as all light meter first thing you need to do is set your ISO set your ISO and they normally have two measuring range one for bright light H and one for low light L. So a good light meter gives you the flexibility to either measure incident light. Each time you see a light meter with a, like a ping pong half ball here, that's the incident light, <coughs> uh, light dome, light sphere. In this measuring mode, what you do is you go to where your subject is and you aim the, cam the light meter towards the camera or the light source, you take a reading. There's a deflection. Here it says the scale is about 80. Then you turn this 80 to the pointer. I'm using the low light scale, so I go to L. So I bring the 80 to L. Then it gives you all the combination for aperture and shutter speed. You can use any one of them. Those camera which has an EV setting like some of the old Hasselblad lens, so it shows you EV here. Then you set the setting onto the respective lens. Like if you like to measure reflected reading, you take this off and included in the case is another light grid like this. So you put it here. This for measuring reflected light. So in this measurement method, we aim at the subject. So I'm the subject. So you aim the light meter towards the subject, take a reading, and then you uh, set the scale accordingly. Now, this meter, they provide you with a series of grids at the back here, this one will go into this slot here. This is for measuring very bright light. So if I'm using for low light, I take this off. So you take a reading, you turn, you turn the dial. And uh, for quick reading, they make a series of grids you put in there. It gives you a direct reading of aperture. So this is selenium cell meter. It uh, doesn't need battery, lasts a long time. But they got some uh, disadvantage, not major. The disadvantage is that it doesn't measure low light very well. So after this selenium cell meter, they have the light meter that is CDS. I don't have CDS meter here. 
but essentially it's the same. So I have a, another Siconic. This needs a battery to run, just a double A, you can get it anywhere. So you do the initial setting, ISO. Uh, this meter has uh, multiple measuring modes. So you can measure for continuous MVM light. You can measure uh, flash metering with a cord or without a cord. So again, you set ISO, you take a reading with a dome. So where the subject is, you take a reading. Then you read off combination of shutter speed and aperture. You push another button, you can show the EV. So this one is price not too expensive, a mid-range, but very effective. For flash, you can either plug in here the, the flash cord from the studio flash. Take this out. It's a bit hard here. Okay, it doesn't matter. I'll pick it up later. So you got the PC sync here. You press it here. Then when the flash is ready, you set it to flash mode. You press the button, it fires. Then it gives you the aperture needed for the exposure. So this is a flash meter, ambient light meter combined. The Minota camera company also made light meters. They make special industrial light meters for calibration of cathode ray tube. But they also make a series of photo light meter. So again, you have a silver head with a dome for incident light. So power it up. You set the mode again. You push the button to take a reading. Then it gives you the display of aperture, shutter speed, and it gives you the scale, the aperture scale. Again, it also has a socket for the flash. So it functions both flash meter and ambient light meter, and it also use a common double A battery. Then from Germany, we have this uh, very famous brand, Gosen. Uh, they have many models. I don't have all of them here. These two is like a twin, that's why I put it all together. Essentially, it's the same light meter. The smaller one is for use in photography. This bigger one is a dual mode. You push this up for photography, you push it down for other types of light measurement for industrial use, you can measure color, flux, food candles, uh, other things. So you can like you want to measure the light transmission on the car windshield, whether the tinting is correct. So you can measure the, the wow. transmission. Or if you are an architect and you want to design room interior, you want to make sure that the lighting level is optimum for the kind of work for drawing, for hospital, for work, workstation. So they got a <coughs> large scale here. But for us, we use it up here for the photography. So you have a setting for ISO, the compensation, you can use reading for aperture <coughs> or shutter speed. You also have a flash meter function and so on. So. Once now is set for measuring uh, for constant light. So you see this, I, I, I fitted this attachment. This is a system flash. So they got various attachment. So if I take this out, then you see the dome. So I put this in, I factor in. The, this one is a repro attachment for copy work. If I want to copy uh, this, on a macro stand, I put it here and, and, and take the reading. So this will give you the combination, shutter speed and aperture. It also helped me to see whether the lighting is even or not. So I take a reading here, I take a reading here, I take a reading here. So if there should not be any variation. So get uniform lighting. Now, this is a companion light meter, the same as the top function, but without the industrial use. And here what I clip is a labo attachment. 
This one is for you to use this light meter as a dark room exposure meter for your enlarger. So you put the negative intake on the light and then you take a reading. So for enlarging. So because this attachment you can take out, they have attachment for spot metering. They have attachment to convert it into color temperature meter. So it's a, it's a system. And for those who have a large format camera, they got a flexible probe which has a fiber optics. You can measure the light on the ground glass of the camera and you can select which way you want to take the reading. So this is a system uh, light meter. Of course, they have smaller ones. They got some very tiny ones. Some you sit on top of the camera to replace the old light meter on the camera that is uh, not working. So light meters are important. All the light meters, they are calibrated to give you a good reading on a standard subject, which is about 18% reflectance gray card. So if you got a difficult subject and you're not sure, you just take the light meter and measure here. Or set it on reflectance, you measure the light falling here. This will represent the average subject. So when you got the right the exposure right for this, you take the cut off, then you got the right exposure for for your subject. But the experienced photographer prefer to use the incident light meter. When you measure incident light, you're measuring the light source. When you measure reflected reading, it depends on your subject, whether dark, gray, and all this. So you've got to factor all those things in to make some fine tuning, plus minus adjustment. But this one, especially those days when we are doing slides, slide film are not very forgiving. You make a mistake, one third half stop, it means either you got a good slide or no good slide. So you want the exposure to be spot on. So incident light meter gives you a better consistent reading. It makes sure that the white is right. When the white is right, all the others will fall in place. So incident light meter. So now, of course, the camera maker have put this light meter into the camera. Uh, it works for convenience, but still there are the purists who still rely on a handheld meter. Not only can you measure light and give you exposure setting, you also can measure light contrast. When you do studio lighting, you want to know the strength of your main light, your fill-in light, and you want to know whether it's one stop or two stop different. So you use this to measure the light ratio. So. The light meter is very useful. Even and, today. Yeah, even today. Yeah, because uh, a camera can only do reflective reading. It can't do incident yeah. reading, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they can't give you an average uh, incident reading on the highlights of the face yeah. or in the shadows of your Except neck. Except for some special camera in the old days, like Olympus, you can measure highlight, you can measure shadow. Mm. And one top con, they actually make a big half tennis ball cone and you put it in front of the lens and that become a huge incident light meter. But today yeah, is... Yeah, today no more. <laughs> okay, then um, I was just having some free time yesterday and I told my friends, if you cannot afford the Leica yet, at least you can draw them, you know. So you got the U Leica and my little signature here. Then you have the M10. Then I have the M6J. 40 years of the M system. This year is going to be the 70th, 70th year of the M system. Like is going to come up with something, I'm sure. The M3. The M6. Yeah, like a Q, whether it's a Q, Q2, Q3, they look the same, except the inside. Then uh, you got the SL2 S. And I, this one, I don't have the camera, so I just open a picture and then look at it and draw it. So now I will give you a live demo on the M6. So M6, you see. It's one thing to know the camera in the specs and use it, 
But it's another thing to know the camera in your head that you can draw it without reference. So here we go. Gee, I didn't know you were an illustrator. Very nice. There, you got M6. <laughs> wow, fantastic. Looks just like my M6. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thanks a lot, Mr. Right, Wu. You're welcome. Yeah, really appreciate it. I think a lot of people are going to uh, remember the days of using a light meter and hopefully some young folks to look at it and look at this and find out how important light meters are because I notice you go to a lot of place a lot of workshops and these studio photographers you ask them if they use a light meter and they don't even know what it is but the importance of it is extremely important so thanks a lot Mr. Wu welcome and we'll see you next week yeah okay bye, bye. bye.